Better fish and guppies are two of the most popular tropical fish in the hobby, so I wanted to publish this comparison video sharing my personal experiences with both to try and help you decide on the best fish for your needs. So starting with the physical appearance and characteristics of these fish, and they are somewhat similar. The regular variants of both have the main body of the fish with smaller fins and a longer more elaborate tail. There is some variety in tail length and shape with the better fish, and as you can see here, Cooley has a longer, more flamboyant tail tail but stitch and skittles both have the shorter placat tail shape. Both species of fish also have a wide range of different colours available too but I will touch on this more in the variety section later in the video. When it comes to size better fish are definitely the larger of the two species and they will usually max out at around 3 inches or 8 centimetres but there is a newer giant better fish variant on the market that I haven't personally kept. Male guppies are actually smaller than female guppies and they usually max out at around 1.5 inches or 3.5 centimetres with female guppies being able to get up to around 2.5 inches or 6 centimetres. Moving on to temperament and behaviour and a lot of this will depend on the personality of your specific better fish. Betters have gained a reputation as being aggressive over the last couple of decades and although some of them are territorial and aggressive this is not always the case. I have seen some people successfully keep their better fish in a community tank set up with other species of fish and not have many issues but personally I keep keep mine in dedicated tanks where they are the only fish in there. I do add some invertebrates to the tank to serve as a cleanup crew with various types of shrimp and snail being used. This is actually what's helped me realise that the personality of your better fish plays a huge role in their temperament and here's some examples. Skittles, my female better fish who are usually considered to be less aggressive than males would hunt and eat any cherry shrimp that she could catch in her tank. It actually got so bad that I decided to remove all of the remaining cherry shrimp from the tank after three days of having her in there. Stitch is one of my male better fish and he doesn't pay much attention to the adult cherry shrimp in his tank but I have seen him eat some of their babies but even then this is more based on opportunity when the baby shrimp get too close to him rather than him going off and hunting. Then we have Cooley who currently just seems to see shrimp as friends and I've seen him get very close to baby shrimp countless times now without trying to eat them and it really is more like he's just really curious about what they are and he enjoys watching them graze on their food at least for now. Contrast this to guppies and it's actually very rare that I see them pay any attention to the shrimp or snails in their tank and some of my shrimps often steal the food from my guppies and they just let them. I do have a dedicated video going over keeping betters with shrimp and guppies with shrimp that I link in this video's description if you do want more information though. Due to only keeping male guppies there is some tail fanning and chasing between them but this is usually just to establish and maintain the hierarchy of the fish in the tank and it's very rare that I see them get physical. Back when I kept my guppies in a community tank they completely ignored the other fish in their tank and they just kept themselves to themselves and went off and did their own thing making them a far better option than betters for a community tank setup in my opinion. Moving on to tank requirements and I link to some of my other videos in the description going over how I set both of these better fish tanks up from scratch as well as one where I offer an overview of this guppy tank to help people who are looking to set up a brand new tank. Now better fish tank size is still a heavily debated topic even in this day and age but most people tend to agree that the absolute minimum tank size for a better fish should be 5 US gallons or around 19 litres. My better fish are both kept in an 8 US gallon or 30 litre cube tank as I like to give them a little extra space but if you are going to be using a 5 US gallon tank then a longer rectangle tank is probably going to be better than a cube. Guppies can also be kept in smaller tanks like this and I usually see the recommendation of 3 guppies in a 5 US gallon tank. There's two ways that you can set this type of guppy tank up as well. The first one is to have one male and two females for a breeding setup and the second one is a three male setup for display purposes but in my opinion you should be going for a larger tank for an all male setup. I know that this might sound a little strange but in my personal experience the more male guppies you have in the tank the less aggression you'll have and I've seen a bunch of other people on social media and reddit and forums all report the same thing. This is why I would personally lean more towards at least a 10 US gallon or 38 litre tank for around 8 to 10 male guppies if you are wanting an all male guppy display tank set up. Rocks, driftwood and live plants are all technically optional but I highly recommend live Live plants as they'll help to maintain safe and stable water parameters for your fish but they also offer hiding spots and sight breaks. Out of the two species in my experience my better fish definitely seem to interact with the plants in their tanks far more than 
my guppies. That said, they can still be useful in a guppy tank as they'll act as sight break so the female guppies can get away from the male guppies and less dominant male guppies can get away from the dominant males in an all male setup to keep things nice and calm. Moving on to water parameters and in my experience better fish are more forgiving with their recommended ranges for various water parameter metrics. I usually go with the recommended water parameters found on seriouslyfish.com and they recommend the following for better splendens. A water temperature of 72 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 to 30 degrees Celsius. A pH of 5.0 to 8.0 depending on if it's a wild or tank bred better. And a hardness of 18 to 268 ppm. One point of note is that plenty of betters who's a respected better keeper over on Instagram and I linked to her account in the video description does recommend the minimum temperature of 79 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius for a better fish and that's what I keep mine at. Now keep in mind this is specifically for better splendens that are currently the most popular type of better fish in the hobby by far. Different types of wild better can have slightly different optimal water parameters such as better Mahakiensis doing better in slightly harder water. Then you have alien better fish that are becoming more popular in the hobby that are a hybrid of different types of better making it a little bit more difficult to work out their optimal pH so try and aim for around 7.0 if possible. When it comes to guppies seriously fish recommends a water temperature of 63 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 17 to 28 degrees Celsius a pH of 7.0 to 8.5. Now this water temperature range is pretty wide and I do know a few people who just keep their guppies in a temperate or ambient tank setup without a dedicated tank heater in it but I use a tank heater and I keep mine at around 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. I often see people on social media say that it's fine to keep guppies in soft water and I have tried this twice and each time I did have problems. A viewer recommended that I try to add some crushed coral to the back of my my tank so it doesn't catch the eye and ruin the aquascape while also slightly increasing my pH and things have been so much easier since I made the switch. If you are thinking of getting guppies as your new fish and you have soft water out of your tap or faucet I would highly recommend that you get something to naturally and safely increase your pH to their recommended ranges. I have tried a few different options and stuff like pH up does increase the pH in your aquarium but personally I still had issues and my guppies have had no problems since I switch to crushed coral so that would be my recommendation. Moving on to the price of these two and there are a few variables to consider. Both of these species are available in a wide range of different grades depending on their colours, patterns, tail and fins. Depending on the specific type of better fish or guppy you want this can drastically increase the price of the fish. In general a single better fish will cost more than a single guppy that is of a comparable grade but most people will want multiple guppies in their tank. Due to this, once you factor in the cost of all of the guppies that you want to keep in your tank, the cost of a single better will usually work out to be the cheaper option. Here in the UK, you can usually get a standard solid blue or solid red better fish for less than £10 in my area. Something like Cooley with different bright colours on him will go for around £25. And then you have the more expensive better fish usually starting at £40 to £60 but they can quickly increase to over £100 depending on certain factors. Guppies have a similar price structure but mutt guppies can sometimes be given away for free if you are in a fish keeping group that has a number of guppy breeders in it. If you are going to be buying the cheaper mutt guppies then they usually go for £1 to £3 per fish in my area. Line bred strain guppies that have a specific colour or pattern usually start at around £4 per fish but this does depend on the specific strain you want and it can rapidly increase from there. Moving on to variety and both fish have an absolute ton of options out there so you should be able to find the perfect fish for your needs it just depends on budget. Better splendens are the most common type of better fish in the hobby by far and they are available in a wide range of different colours and patterns but they also come with different tail and fin shapes. Better imbellus is probably the most common type of wild better fish in my area but better mahakiensis and better smaragadina are also starting to increase in popularity and some people are starting to keep mouth brood and better fish as well. As I mentioned earlier the alien better fish hybrids are also starting to become very popular but I have seen mixed opinions on how hardy these actually are and I have seen people recommend that you go for a better Mahakiensis or a better Smaragadina to get a similar look of that fish that will usually be hardier than an alien better fish. Guppies have a very similar thing going on and they're available in a huge range of different colours and patterns with a range of different fin and tail shapes. 
Personally, I like the Cobra Guppy pattern and they are commonly available in red, yellow, green and blue, but there are a few rarer colour variants out there that are more expensive. Snow White Guppies are starting to become increasingly popular in the hobby and these are an all white guppy rather than an albino with red eyes. I'm not sure if the term flame tail and sunburst are used interchangeably, but I do see these listed in my area on a regular basis and they seem very popular and to me they look the same. The term endless guppies usually refers to a cross between endless live bearers and regular guppies and these are also becoming increasingly popular in the hobby. This is due to these hybrid fish usually having bright colours like regular guppies but the bloodline from the endless live bearers can add unique colours and tails to the fish while also making them slightly hardier than regular guppies. The main point to take from this section is that there are plenty of options out there for both better fish and guppies and you should be able to find something that you like the look of. Moving on to feeding and in my experience both of these fish are very easy to feed. My guppies are ravenous and they'll instantly get onto any food that I add into their tank and in my experience they also eat a far wider range of foods than betters. In my opinion this is due to guppies being true omnivores that are happy eating fish meal based foods, insect based foods and plant based foods. On top of actual food that I add to the tank I do commonly see my guppies eating algae and they'll also sometimes pick at detritus too. When it comes to specific foods I usually usually give my guppies NT Labs Micro Chrome and Fluval Bug Bites every day as their staple foods and I do usually give them a weekly treat of frozen Daphnia or frozen Cyclops and they'll also get the leftover bloodworm from my Corydorus Garami and Better Fish too. Better Fish are still easy to feed but they are commonly listed as being omnivores and in my experience they just spit plant based food back out and wait for something else. All of my Better Fish have happily eaten fish meal and insect based food products without issue but they'll also eat a wide range of frozen foods too. Bloodworms are a particular favourite of Stitch and Skittles and they get visibly excited when they know it's treat day. On the other hand Cooley will eat bloodworm but he does seem to lose interest quickly and go off and do something else and prefer to eat his actual regular fish granules. Frozen Daphne and frozen Cyclops can be hit and miss too with Skittles loving both but Stitch and Cooley often pay them minimal attention and just ignore them and then the shrimp in their tank end up getting them for food. When it comes to specific specific food for my better fish I often give them fluval bug bites and NT labs nanotropical on a daily basis and they'll get two treat meals per week of various frozen foods. Moving on to the health and hardiness and there's a ton of different variables that are going to come into play for this section so it really can be hit and miss. Unfortunately both species can have various problems caused by line breeding to try and increase the chances of offspring having specific colours, patterns, fins and tail shapes. That said in my experience guppies have have definitely had more problems than better fish when it comes to their health. Although better fish have been hardier in my experience they can still suffer from a wide range of problems. There's an absolute ton of posts on social media, reddit and forums of people sharing photographs of their better fish developing tumours and various other problems so this does seem to be common. My main point is that both species can have health issues and in some cases it's difficult to avoid them. Moving on to tank mates and your personal preferences will come into play for this one. Like like I mentioned earlier, personally I prefer to keep my better fish in their own tanks where they are the only fish in that tank with a couple of inverts. The Frank's Betters YouTube channel has some great videos where he goes out into the Thai jungle and shows you the natural habitat of better fish and he usually mentions that betters are solitary fish even in the wild. Guppies on the other hand are great community fish but you might want to keep them with other species that do well in water that has a pH of at least 7.0. As I mentioned earlier, back when I kept my guppies with other the fish species they totally ignored everything else in the tank and they just kept themselves to themselves but some of the guppies did just go off and do their own thing as an individual fish. As you can see I keep my guppies in a species specific tank but this is due to how I like to view my fish and that brings me on to the final section of the video personal experiences. My guppy tank and my two better fish tanks are easily my most viewed tanks and I'll often sit in my bean bag at the end of the day and just watch them but they do both fit different roles. I like I like to watch my guppies at the end of a busy day when I just want to switch off and watch some fish swim around without any real rhyme or reason and I need to put minimal brain power into watching them. I do love the way guppies swim and personally I do find
find it really relaxing to just watch them and switch off. On the other hand, better fish seem to randomly decide to inspect an object in their tank and make it the sole focus of their attention. This is such a random thing to watch, but I have lost count of the number of times I've been fascinated and had to put a lot of brain power into trying to work out why my better is staring at a particular leaf in their tank for whatever reason. Another way to look at this is to compare them to TV shows. Guppies are more like reality TV where it's easy viewing and you can switch off and it really doesn't take much effort to understand what's going on. Better fish are more like a documentary that's fun to watch but you will have to pay attention at key times to understand what's actually happening. Both species of fish are easy to feed so that's not really going to be a deciding factor for most people as the foods the fish will eat are readily available. Both species can have various health problems and like I mentioned in my experience betters have been more healthy than my guppies but on the flip side of this a better fish can work out to be cheaper than a bunch of guppies for a tank. As I mentioned earlier if you want a single larger fish in your tank then a better fish is probably the better option for your needs but if you want multiple smaller colourful fish in your tank then guppies are going to take the lead. Personally I don't breed my fish but from what I've seen online guppies are extremely easy to breed so if you're looking for a breeding project then guppies are going to take the lead over better fish again. At the end of the day your personal goals for your aquarium will be the deciding factor because both of these are great fish. I have both, I enjoy watching both and I plan to keep both moving forward. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good day.